Hi, and welcome to our command line basics lecture um, for Program for Cultural Heritage. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the command line basics that um, we can use on your uh, computer and uh, look at some of the programs that are uh, available to us that can be used in the command line. And while, you know, eventually we're going to be looking at using Python to interact with data files and uh, APIs and all that sorts of things, we want to start off kind of with some basic uh, command line activities to make sure that we're really comfortable with the computer and understand uh, everything that we're doing uh, to get into Python. Um, so first thing that we want to kind of talk about is what you can do on the command line. And when I say command line, basically this is the non-GUI interface to your computer. And so while your computer has the GUI interface, you know, with this Windows, you can click, copy, and paste stuff. Um, there, everything you can do in that interface, you can do um, on this command line, which is a textual interface. And what's nice about this textual interface is that it's it's very powerful. Um, you can do a lot kind of larger operations with it. Um, you can do kind of streamline things, and you don't need to go through using the mouse and moving stuff around and all that. It's very kind of a powerful interface to your computer. Um, so some of the things that we're going to be looking at doing is things like navigating around your computer. And so when I say navigating, I mean the file system on your hard drive. So your hard drive is made up of directories, right? And there's the root directory, and then there's uh, subdirectories all the way down um, throughout the, the hard drive. And so how do you move around in those directories and uh, see what files are there and stuff like that? Um, you can also move files or copy files um, from directory to directory. Um, and then also, you know, you can do things like deleting files and deleting directories and all sorts of things. And then also we're going to look at some of the command line tools that you can use um, on this, uh, the command line. So first of all, we need to figure out how to get started by opening access to our command line. And so if you're on a um, um, OS X uh, Macintosh computer, um, you can use the terminal application. So if you go up to your searchlight um, icon and search for terminal, you'll see a program called terminal. And then if you're on the Windows um, platform, Windows 10, you can use the program called PowerShell. So you just go down to your start button and search for the word PowerShell. And so these are two applications that you can launch and they'll open up um, as uh, their own windows. And so what you can do with these um, command line uh, access is basically give it a set of commands. You know, like in Python, we're going to be learning all about these different commands and different, uh, you know, uh, functions that you use to get things uh, you want done in your program. And the command line is very similar. It's kind of like a very simple programming uh, language. And so there's all these vocabularies that you need to learn um, to kind of get what you want done. Um, there's very simple things. So like there's a program called ls, which just lists the files in the directory. Um, there's a program called CD, which changes where you are in your directory. Um, and, you know, in addition, there's there's programs called you know make directory, which makes a directory, uh, move move files around, um, and then we also get into more complicated programs like grep, which looks for a file, a text string in a, in a file. Uh, on Windows is called find string. Um, you know, you can count the number of words in a file. And what's also interesting is that using these command lines, you can kind of chain operations together, right? And so what you can do is you can ch say, okay, I want to take the, the output of this one operation, say I want to um, look for a certain word in the file, and then I want to send the results of that over to another program that, say, might count the number of occurrences that, that I found. So in, in one command, you can say, okay, I want to find all the occurrences in the file and then count how many there are. And so you can do this using this, this pipe operator and this, this kind of um, greater than sign to send uh, commands back and forth. So this is pretty abstract, um, but we can kind of uh, uh, understand it by doing some examples. Um, but some big takeaways before we get into the examples would be um, if, you're kind of, if you need help with one of these commands on, on um, Macintosh and Linux, you can use the help argument, and I'll give an example of that, so you can always kind of ask it for help. Um, you always want to, if you're kind of lost in your uh, command line, you don't know where you are in the structure of your computer or your hard drive, you can always use the PWD on uh, OSX or the get location command to show you where exactly you are in the system. Um, you can always just close the window, right? Close the terminal or the PowerShell and reopen it and start anew. 
And then a uh, really nice feature is that you're going to want to use a lot is the autocomplete feature when you type it on the command line. And so when you hit the tab key, the autocomplete will automatically try to guess what you're trying to write and it will kind of finish your sentence for you. And so this is nice. So you don't need to have to type out very long kind of command lines. You just hit tab and it, it oh, will finish that out for you. And spaces are notari notariously kind of difficult in uh, command line stuff and file names. Um, so if you're going to use file names in your spaces, make sure that the file name, whenever you reference it, is wrapped in quotation marks. Um, all right, so let's give some examples of what we can do with command line, uh, and we'll get kind of increasingly more complicated with it. So say, for example, um, you have a bunch of files in a directory, and someone says, hey, can you send me a list of those uh, files? Um, so for example, say I have a bunch of uh, files in my um, desktop, a bunch of PDF files, right? And so here's my my GUI interface of all these files. You know, if these aren't that many files, so I can go through, you know, and copy each one, maybe take a screenshot and send it to them. But with the command line uh, tools, we can actually do this pretty simply and, and kind of quickly. So to get started, let's open up our command line. So we're gonna go up here, I'm, I'm on a Macintosh, I'm gonna say terminal and launch um, that program. And so when we launch it, it's going to look like this. It's going to open up in a new window, and it's going to have some kind of basic information about what's there. Um, in, the, in this version, in the Macintosh version of Terminal, we have um, some information displayed by default. So M here is my username. So that's my username. And I'm on this computer called MacBook Pro, which is the name of this computer. Um, so I have a name, and my computer has a name. And so this. Uh, interface here, this is the command line, right? So I can do stuff, um, uh, I can type my commands and run them. And so for example, if you go back to um, some of those early commands we we're talking about, you could say ls, right? And that shows you what files are in the directory. And so it looks like I have applications, I have a download folder, I have a desktop, um, documents, all sorts of stuff here. Um, so I can also say PWD to say, okay, where am I? And so here I'm saying I'm in my users directory and I'm in the M. So I'm in my users, my user directory. And these folders are all my folders, right? This is my Dropbox account data. This is my uh, music and movies. If I had anything in there, these are documents, etc. And so uh, you can list files with LS and that kind of displays like this. And you can also uh, pass arguments to the to the command. And so I'm going to say, okay, list files, and I'm going to pass the L argument. So you see this hyphen L. And so I'm going to say, list all the files and use this special argument hyphen L to do something special to the command. And this L means don't display them like this in, in rows, but display them in a big column, right? And so now it shows you all the those files that are in a directory. Um, but in kind of a more verbose metadata kind of way. And so what you can also do is you can add multiple command line parameters or arguments to it. So I can say list and add uh, H. And so what the H does is tells you, um, goes from having the, the file size display, displayed in bytes into um, uh, more human readable. So kilobytes and but, um, megabytes and gigabytes if that was the case, right? And so using this, you can uh, kind of see what files are available to you and are that are in the, in the directory. And so now, now I, like I said, I'm in the, my user directory and I know that there's these other folders. And so um, the folder I show, showed with all the PDFs, that's in my desktop. And it's a file, a folder on my desktop called PDFs. And so if I want to get to that point on my computer, I need to navigate there, right? So I need to change my place where I am currently in, in the computer to get to that directory. And so what we can do is type CD for change directory and then where we want to go. So we want to go to the desktop. And so now I change directory on my computer and I'm in the desktop. If I type PWD, I can see that I'm there on my desktop. And so I can see, okay, what, um, what files are on my desktop. So if I type ls, 
I can see that I have two folders. I have a PDF folder and I have a sort folder. So I can change directory again into my PDFs. And I hit tab there to autocomplete. If I type ls again, I can see there are all my PDFs, right? And if I type ls hyphen l, it'll make them display them in list format. And if I type ls hyphen lh, it will display them in list format with uh, human readable file sizes, right? There's some larger PDFs there. All right, so the original kind of activity was like, okay, can I send this list of information to somebody, right? So this is very nice because it's textual and it has the file sizes and it has dates and all that sort of stuff. So as I mentioned earlier, you can kind of chain these commands together to do different things. One of the commands was um, uh, word count. Uh, and so you could say, okay, count all the number of words in this in this in this uh, document you pass to it. But as I mentioned earlier, you can use different commands to pipe the results of one operation into the other. And so in this case, I can use the pipe command to say, okay, take the result of this operation, ls the type in lh, and pipe it over to the word count command. And here's saying, okay, well, there's 18 lines, there's 155 words and 95, 954 characters, right? So I know for, you know, there's 18 files basically in this directory. The other uh, operator we talked about was the greater than sign. So this doesn't pipe this, in. it doesn't pipe the results of this operation into another command or another program, it pipes it into a file. So I could say myfiles.txt. And no, re no results came to the screen here, right? Nothing showed up here. But if we type ls again, we'll see that now there's a file called uh, my files listed here. And if we went back to the GUI interface, um, you know, just our, our regular desktop view, we could see um, that. Uh, that file is now there. And if we opened up that file, it would have the results of our um, output command stored there. So, um, you know, there's many, many kind of operations you can do with the command line that are super useful. Um, uh, for example, say I wanted to make a new folder um, that just had P my PDFs, or I wanted to move this file my file out of this directory, I can move it to uh, back to my desktop, for example. So I can say move file, and I've got to tell it where, what file I wanted to move. So I'll say my file.txt, and where do I want to move it? So I could do uh, the complete path, which is users, right? My username is m, and then my desktop is desktop. So I move that file. If I looked again, it's not here anymore. I move that file one uh, level down to my desktop. And um, the command line has some shortcuts built in, some kind of aliases built in. And so uh, the, the current directory that you're in is aliased as a single period. So when you see the single period, that means the current directory. The previous directory though is called dot dot, so period period. And so if you use period period, it's saying, okay, that's the alias for one level down um, from where I currently am. And so by using the period period, you could, um, you know, kind of, you don't necessarily know, need to know the absolute path of where you are. You can just say um, a relative path, right? So say I wanted to move this one file called um, newyorker.pdf down one file to my desktop. I could just say move uh, newyorker.pdf um, one file, one level down. And now it's no longer here. And if I move myself, my view down one level, I'm back on my desktop now. And I can type PWD to see that. Um, and I say LS again. These are the, there are the two files that I moved back, right? So there are, uh, um, you know, many kind of commands that you can do. Um, on the command line to make these kind of just like managing your files easier uh, and quicker. Um, so you can you can do um, things like wildcards, right? So if I go back into my PDFs, 
and I want to say, okay, just show me all the PDF files here, right? So say there was a mixture of PDF and CSV files, um, or say I'm going to go to my, go back down one level and go back down again, and now I'm in my user directories, and I'm going to go to my desktop or my downloads and say, okay, show me all the CSV files in this uh, download directory, right? So there's this one CSV file I have. And let's see some more information, detailed about, information about it, right? It's a 12 gigabyte file. So the command line um, is, is very kind of useful for doing these sorts of things uh, to automate kind of very quickly change stuff around and, and navigate and move files around. All right, so that was one example um, of kind of fairly simple example of sending uh, you know a list of files that were in a directory to somebody um, by you know you put them into a text file and then you could email them that text file or something like that. Um, so a little bit more complicated example could be something like, can you split up the CSV file for me? So say for example you had a, a dump of, uh, of, of a database and it was in a CSV format, um, and CSV is basically an Excel file, it's a spreadsheet. Um, so say you had a, you know, a very large dump of database and you only wanted to send certain types of the rows to somebody else or you wanted to kind of pull out certain data uh, to work with it. And so you could say, okay, well, it's an Excel file or it's a CSV file, I'll just open this up in Excel and work with it there. Um, and so that could work up to a certain point, but then you start getting to the point where you need to do work with data programmatically, right? And so say you had a CSV file that was, you know, more than a certain number of rows. So if it was 100 rows or 1,000 rows, sure, you could work with that in Excel. But what if it was you know, 10,000 or 100,000 or millions or tens of millions of rows? You would need to not be able to open that up in Excel because it wouldn't work, right? It wouldn't be able to render all that data um, at once. And so what's really powerful about these command line utilities is that it doesn't care how big these files are, right? It doesn't need to build a user interface for it. It'll just do its operations, it'll iterate over the file, regardless if it's, you know, a megabyte, 10 megabytes, you know, 10, you know, 100 gigabytes, it'll just work on it over, over it as it iterates. Um, so let's kind of do an example of just taking a larger file and doing something with it. Um, so we'll do the, a couple things here. Um, we'll first kind of play with a fun data set, um, which is uh, what's on the menu. This was a New York uh, Public Library crowdsourcing data. So they took, um, old menus, you know, from the 19th century on, and uh, they put those scans up, and then uh, folks came in and uh, read what was on the menu and then transcribed it, right? So it built this really great data set of historical menu items and their prices. So this is kind of a, a fun uh, example to use, to, to use, uh, for example, our grep command. So look for something inside of, uh, of a file. Um, so what we're going to do, we'll go through this from the very start to the end. So we're going to go over to the uh, website and we're going to download the data that is available to that uh, available. So if we go into the data tab, and then there's an option here for the uh, latest export. So we'll just download the latest export. And so this is gonna download um, as a file. Uh, if I go into my downloads directory, uh, I should see it. And what we can do is uh, extract it. So I'm just gonna double click on it um, here to extract the file. And so now I have a, a directory called 2028-16-7-1-26 data, right? If I go in there, it has a number of files, dishes, menus, menu items, pages, right? So I download the file, it's extracted. These are CSV files that are available to me. So now what I wanna do is do something with them with the command line, right? So I'm gonna head back to my command line and start working with it. All right, so currently we are uh, where we left off last time, which was in our desktop or downloads. Um, so if I wasn't in uh, my downloads, for example, say I was back in my home directory, when I just opened up the terminal, 
I'll clear it here. I'm back in my home directory. I would need to say, okay, CD directory downloads, right? So now I'm in my downloads uh, and there's a lot of files in here. So I could say, okay, I want to look for, um, I know the file started with 2020 or something like that. Um, all right. And so here is uh, the directory 2020 and it has the um, data in it, right? And so this is the directory and what I want to do is change into the, that directory. So I'll say CD 2020 and I'll hit tab and it will just automatically complete for me, right? And I'll hit enter. And so now I'm in that directory and if I type LS and there are my three files, four files, right? So what we can do um, is we can actually take a peek at this file by using the less command. We can say less and then the name of the file. And this will kind of just give us a quick little peek into the file, what's there. Um, and so what's nice about this is that even if this file was 100 gigabytes large, it will just take the first you know, few um, lines of it and, just show and display them to you. And so you can kind of see, okay, yeah, this is like a, a typical format for a CSU file. There's the header names and then each row of data is a uh, item in the file in the csv file right and each piece of each piece of data it's like an excel spreadsheet right it's separated by a comma so you have value comma value comma value right it's comma separated values all right so now i know that this what this kind of looks like i could kind of pull out the piece of data that i wanted right so i'm going to hit exit and hit q and i'm back to my command line and so less again less was just one of these commands that uh, we can use to interact with data. Another one is grep. And so what grep does is it searches a file for a specific keyword that you're looking for, right? And so the, the arguments that you need to use to pass the grep is you say, okay, grep, um, the word you wanna look for, so let's look for alligator. And then the file you wanna look for it in, so I'll say dish. And so I run it, and it, since I didn't pipe this out anywhere or put it to a new file, it just returns it to the screen. That's what the command line does. It will just return it to the screen. And so we can see that it found a number of, so it found a number of results uh, for alligator pear, uh, including some you know, crispy chunks of tender alligator, um, which is legit you know, alligator meat, but also I found a lot of alligator pears. Uh, so we don't know what that is, so let's, you know, just for fun, let's take a look in Google and look for uh, alligator pear. Right, and so the old, the old-fashioned way of talking about avocados was, you know, alligator pear. And so what we could do with this, right? Say we, we were just interested in that data. That's this very small subset of data. And so the same way we, we pipe that information out into differing other commands, we can do exactly the same here too. And so for example, we could first, you know, get, get, a, get a, a, a quick idea of how many hits there were, right? So we piped it to the word count command. Okay, so there's 13 lines. That means there's about 13 rows of data that we found that on. Um, and then we could even create a subset of this, right? So we could say, instead of piping into work count, we could send it out to its new file called alligator pair.csv, right? And so basically I just created a new CSV file of just alligator pair information. And so I've gone from this you know, 25 megabyte file down to this very less than one kilobyte file of just the information I was wanting, wanting to use or, or wanted to look at. So let's do the same example, um, but we'll show you how to do it in um, uh, uh, Windows instead of on the, the Mac. All right, so we're going to kind of do the same thing, but instead of using the um, terminal and grep command, we're gonna use the PowerShell and the find string command. Uh, which are equivalent in the Windows world. Um, so the first thing I did is that I, I went ahead and did that first step where I downloaded the data and it's in my um, downloads directory. So there's the, the file, archive file, then here's the three or four, sorry, uh, file, CSV files. And so what we wanna do is um, 
similar to how we started the terminal in Macintosh OS X, we're going to uh, we're going to load up the PowerShell. So now here's a PowerShell. Let's make that larger. And so it's very similar. Um, you know, the same, pretty much a lot of the same commands work. Um, it does get it does change uh, for various commands, but some of the basic ones like uh, ls are this exactly the same. You know, it just lists the files. And so again, it, I'm in my user directory here. In this case, my username is IE user. And so, but I see the same idea, right? There's the desktop, there's the documents, there's downloads. And so what I can do is just exactly the same as I did on the OS X. I can change directory to my downloads. I hit tab, it will auto complete for me. And I can type LS, right? And I'll see the, the files that are there. And uh, again, here are the, the dish files that we want to look into. And so instead of using grep in this environment, I'll use uh, find string. And the find string, we just, uh, similar to grep, we say, okay, that's the command. We want to look for the word alligator. And we want to look in the file dish. Right? And it's found exactly the same results. And we should even be able to do the same thing where we pipe this out uh, to a new file. We'll say results.csv. Let's look again. And there's the results, a subset of the data. So it's very similar to if you're on a, on a Windows computer and you want to do these kind of uh, programmatic uh, command line uh, access to data as well, you can do exactly the same thing uh, using the PowerShell. Um, and there's a link in the in the notes or in the um, presentation that has some more equivalencies. So in my couple slides, I showed the, the kind of the Linux or the OS X version of the command and then the Windows version of the command. Uh, there's a link to a page that has um, more of examples of those kind of conversions between the two different types of commands. So check that out if you're on Windows and you want to get more into PowerShell and understanding what um, these different uh, commands can do for you. Um, so just to demonstrate kind of like a uh, taking this idea to extreme, let's try to instead of using uh, this fairly small, like 25 megabyte CSV file, Let's try using that bigger file that I, I um, we looked at earlier um, on the desktop or in my downloads directory. Um, and so that file uh, comes from this NYC open data directory portal. And basically it has you know a bunch of open data uh, that's available for you to, to use for free. Uh, and one of them is this 311 service request. Um, so these are all the 311 requests made um, from 2010 to present. And so if you um, come to this data portal, uh, data.cityofnewyork.us, and you can search for various data sets, you know, there's hundreds of data sets here, and then you can export them as CSV files usually. And so I did that, I exported this as a CSV file and I, I put it in my downloads. And so let's take a look at that um, CSV file. All right, so I'm going to be back in my, uh, I'm back where my menu item was. So I'm going to go back down one level. So CD dot dot. And now I'm back in my download directory. And uh, I don't remember quite what it was called, right? But there's a CSV file. So I say, show me all the CSV files in the directory. All right. All right. So there it is. And so I'll say, okay, let's see some more details about it. Uh, this human. And so we can see that it's 12 G, right? So it's 12 gigabytes of data. And so that's fairly large for a CSV file, right? If you try to open up a 12 gigabyte file in Excel, it probably would not be very happy. Um, so we can use the word count command and say, I just wanna know how many lines something is and then pass it the file name and say, okay, word count command on this file. Let's see how many lines are in this um, CSV file. All right, so quite a number of lines, right? So that's hundreds of thousands here. So about 23 million lines in the CSV file. And so of course, you know, you can't open up a 23 million line file in Excel. But what we can do is is still use the, the same types of very simple command line uh, commands on it to, to get what we want. So for example, if we wanted to pull out all of the 311 requests having to do with Prospect Park, right? A large park in, in Brooklyn. We could do something like uh, grep uh, prospect park, and then the file name we want to look in, which is our big 
301 service request CSV, right? And so now this is just going through the entire file, finding any occurrence of that string processor park and pulling it and pulling it back to the screen, right? Because we didn't say what to do with it. And so you know we have a number of options we could, could do here. We could, um, if we're just interested in the, in the number of times it occurred, we could pass it to the word count uh, program, or we could you know pipe it out to a new data set and just call it. And this would just be data around Prospect Park. So this is going to take a while, but it kind of shows you, you know, the, the computer doesn't care how big the file is. It doesn't care that there's 23 million rows. It's just accessing it programmatically and doing it uh, as it goes along. Um, another thing when you're using Python or when you're using a uh, command line, you can always stop an operator by pressing control C and it will just break the, uh, the flow of the program. And so, you know, there's a lot more command line um, tools you could get to, to know and use. They're very super useful. Um, but uh, the next step that we're going to be doing is actually installing Python and using Python as its own command line tool. So after we get Python installed, just how we have grep, then we have less installed. Next, then we'll have Python installed, right? And so we can say, okay, Python, run this file, and it will run that file. So that's the next step of kind of working with this command line and, and moving on to the next phase of these uh, tools. Um, so for a, uh, an activity, what you could try to do is see if you can get your um, kind of command line chops working by uh, trying to use your own uh, data file with this. And so what you can do uh, as a uh, kind of an, a fun activity for, for getting used to using the command line if you want some more experience is to head over to even the, the open data uh, portal for New York and download something, something maybe large, you know, it doesn't have to be as large as that 311 file, but it could be pretty significant, whatever you wanted to do. And try using some of these command line tools on it. See if you're able to grep them. See if you're able to, or if you're on Windows, find string. See if you're able to use the less or the tail command on them. Um, try navigating around your computer, right? Try moving to your desktop, try copying files from one place to another. And so the more familiar you'll get with using the command line is kind of the more you'll think about these actions and programmatic steps and how you can use um, them to kind of accomplish tax, tasks and, and string together various commands to get something done, um, which is very similar to what we'll be moving into into Python. All right, so give that a try and until next time, bye.